visit my website at troysweb.com for more content about aquariums, gardening, cooking, carpentry, and uh, furniture building, kind of, I guess, um, for video games. I also do stream as GameBrain.media or GameBrain Media here on Twitch, but GameBrain.media, go to that website. You will find a link to my Twitch or my Twitch um, account and my YouTube account. So I keep my gaming separate from this. This is my in real life IRL channel. And that's why it features um, aquariums and gardening and cooking because that's what I do IRL in real life. All right, man. So um, I have my other phone out in my hand and I want to make sure that the stream is live. Things are working. BRB. All right, well, it works. Yep, my PC is working. Ah, now we have a chat room. All right, very good, I can see chat. So, I'm gonna set this phone here. Ta-da, so I can see chat. If anybody happens to show up, I mean, I stream randomly. Um, and I'm also gonna turn the chat window off here because hide chat. It takes up so much screen real estate. I wanna see what you're seeing and that's, that's what you're seeing. You can see my laundry basket over there. Because I'm doing laundry. Actually, the machine just shut off. I should have done that before I, I, I fired up a stream. Anyway, let's get busy, dude. Um, you, you can check my previous streams by going to troysweb.com and you're going to see a video gallery which links directly to my YouTube channel. And you can find Aquarium. Just search troysweb.com and aquarium and you'll find it or go to troy's web and search that or go to troy's web find my youtube then go to my youtube and search aquarium on my channel it depends how adept you are at using youtube piece of cake right simple simon go to troy's web.com find my youtube link and search for aquarium and you're only going to have three videos to choose from really but you're going to see that we have a 55 gallon tank in the house and it's not mine Actually, there's a 75-gallon tank in my roommate's bedroom. It's his house. He's my landlord slash roommate slash buddy I've had since I was nine years old. Right Here we are 40-something years later, almost 50 years later, um, and we're still hanging out. <laughs> yeah, we've gone our separate ways for many times throughout life, but uh, he's got a 75-gallon tank with a bunch of African cichlids in his bedroom, and then we have this beautiful tank in the living room that we've been trying to turn into an angel tank. So we added these three angels. We, we Well, there's a whole story. Just go watch the videos. Right now, today, we're going to get busy with this. We're going to cut open this box. We're going to set up this tank. I just looked up the cost of the Aquaculture Aquarium Starter Kit 20. But it doesn't tell me. Hot 20 gallon glass aquarium. Now see, the Walmart website only shows a 20 gallon plastic aquarium at 80 bucks. And I thought I saw this in the store at 130 bucks. But honestly, I think any, any, any price for a tank, you could easily expect to double that cost in order to get that tank fully functional. Which means this tank, it's just a tank. There's no gravel on the bottom. There's no decorations. There's no plastic plants. There's no real plants. There's nothing. You're going to get, a, a, in this case, a glass container. In other cases, a plastic container, a plastic tank. But they do make a 5, 10, and 20-gallon kits. They are very affordable. In fact, I wrote it down. A 5-gallon aquarium could be 30 bucks in glass. A 10-gallon aquarium that's plastic is 30 bucks. A 29-gallon aquarium is 110 bucks, but that's plastic. Um, and then a 20 gallon plastic is 80 bucks. I think this 20 gallon glass is 30 bucks, but I don't know. My roommate just said, Hey, you've been complaining about, uh, or talking about, you know, the, the new fish we added to the community tank are being mean to our established population. So we either want to remove the bullies or we want to remove the peaceful fish and give them a peaceful place to exist and let the bullies just continue to fight with each other. I mean, they're pretty. It's funny. Uh, well, it's not really funny. It's just, you don't know. Are they playing? Do fish play? Are they toying with each other? 
Or are they fighting over the peaceful fish that I think is a female? And once we remove the female, maybe those boys in the tank will settle the hell down. I don't know. I'm new to the fish hobby. But, dude, I'm telling you, it's, it's quite interesting. And uh, we're going to pull this thing apart. I'm not going to have prices for anything. Um, now, he, he originally went to the store. He picked up this box, this bag of aquarium gravel, and this bag of aquarium gravel. These are five-gallon or five-pound bags. They want you to put, what was it, 20 pounds of gravel in, in a 20-gallon in a, in a tank? 20 pounds of gravel. Well, we have 10 pounds, but that just seems like, actually, it's, I think it's substantially more. Let me read the bag. Okay. Two inches of gravel, especially with an underground filter. So for most aquariums, that is two pounds per gallon. So a 20 gallon aquarium, they want you to put 40 pounds of gravel in it? Doesn't that seem extreme? Or it seems excessive. Anyway, I just ordered 5, 10, 15 pounds of pure white gravel. And we're going to return this blue gravel and the black gravel because it's what there was on. It, it was on the shelf, and he thought, hey, man, that looks pretty cool. It, and it does. And guess what? We have the cars to match. So, you know, there's the die-cast metal car. And, and, you know, I was going to just, okay, let's make this half of the tank blue and this half of the tank black and park it next to the car. But then we realized that we're going to put a white and black, um, a black and white zebra striped or zebra pattern, which is what I call them. I'm sure there's another name for the uh, fish mature, uh, fish enthusiasts, aquarium enthusiasts. People will know that a little striped, vertical striped uh, angelfish has a unique coloration. Uh, that I, they're probably not called a zebra uh, angelfish. Anyway, if we're going to put a black and white fish in here, we thought, hmm, it might look pretty cool with white gravel, like the picture. And then we have this, which he's had laying around for a long time. But if you reverse it, ta-da, we can have a black background on the tank. And then we can have white gravel. And we can put a nice piece of furniture in there, or fake tree, you know, a plastic that, uh, tree. That's, that's black and grayish color instead of brown, like wood. And we're not gonna put brown and wood and green in here and make it a natural looking environment uh, like a regular underwater. Well, then again, do angels naturally live in areas where it's green and brown lumber or wood and fallen trees underground? Or are they in the tropical areas where there's coral and stuff like that? I don't know. That's actually something that I'm interested in now that I mentioned it, and I'll go research that on YouTube. Anyway, so initially, my roommate heard me talking about, man, the new koi fish, the new koi angels are just uh, obnoxious, and they're fighting constantly. They have grown like hell. That's fantastic. It's fun to see that. But it's sad to see our original fish, the OFs, drop into the far corner and hide because they don't want to play. They don't want to get picked on. If it's bullying or is it play? Do our older fish don't or existing fish not want to play? Or are these new fish just bullies? And they're, they're aggressive and they will continue to hammer on each other. And our boys are staying the hell out of the fight. They're, they're hiding in the corners and I feel sorry for them because they used to swim and, and, and enjoy the full range of a 55 gallon tank. Anyway, my roommate, Charles, heard all that. We're, as we talked about it, as we added these new fish, as we, you know, we lost, like, what was it? We, 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 we tried 11 angelfish, and only two lived. And those two that I'm trying to save by putting them in this, and not necessarily calling it a hospital tank, a rescue tank, or a, a shelter for the, the peaceful fish to get away from the bullies, um... I don't know. I don't know what to call it, but uh, man, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, well, we were running that tank at, well, it, it came as a 55 gallon kit and it included a heater. And he's always just, it is what it is. It's, it's specified for this tank, but the tank would only maintain 72 to 74 degrees. And I was stating to him that I did some research and 
I think the fish are basically cold. Their metabolism drops. They don't eat much. They don't swim much. And they die. And now we've put a heater in there and everybody's thriving. Uh, so we put in a much, much better heater that has a dial on it instead of, here, here's a little contained unit that says it'll keep your tank at 75 for a 55-gallon tank, up to 55-gallon. Man, okay, it probably worked in a 30-gallon just fine. But in a 55-gallon, even with good circulation, because we know we have flow, um, it, it didn't, it, it wasn't keeping the fish alive, apparently. So anyway, now that we've added, um, we actually added the other heater and left the other one in there as a backup. So it's probably running on the regular, but then the bigger, newer, higher wattage uh, with a thermostat heater takes up the slack. So if that little heater can only get the, the whole tank to 72 or 74 degrees, the other heater just kicks on occasionally and whoop, bumps it up to 78 degrees, 79. And now, depending on the weather, um, like in the dead of winter, the house is 65 degrees. The temperature in the tank was uh, maybe 78 or 79, which is what the thermostat on the new heater was set to. But now that it has become summer and warm, and the house is now like 75 degrees or 72 degrees, the tank has also warmed, and that tank is now pushing about 81 and a half or 82 and a half degrees. So we might dial down the thermostat a little bit. Don't know. Maybe the heat is making the fish crazy? I doubt it. But anyway, like I said, he came home with this guy, a heater, and the heater says this is an adjustable heater from 68 to 93 degrees for tanks from 10 to 20 gallons. Bam, bam. He came home with this gravel. We decided we want to go with a different color scheme. So I ordered that on Amazon. I got 15 pounds coming, which is three bags instead of these two. Um, you know, they want us to put 10 bags in here. Is that what I, two pounds, two pounds per gallon? Yeah, two pounds per gallon. So they want, actually they want 40 pounds in here? Are you insane? Well, we'll see how thick of coverage we get. We're not using ungravel filter, blah, blah, blah. All right, so all of that being said, we originally had this. Oh, hey, oh, it's got a sticker on it, but no price tag. I don't know what this cost. 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 So I can't help you in that area. But we're going to unbox this thing and see what's included. And then we're going to potentially try filling this with water, filling this with water, and then letting it sit. And I have a pH tester and I have, uh, we have this stuff left over, the water clear stuff. Um, but it looks like it's been around a while. He's had multiple tanks for years. I don't know how old this product is. There's not much in here. And I actually bought new product anyway. So that's a thing. Then he decided, oh, well, in my bedroom, in his big 75-gallon tank, he has one of these bubblers. So you need a pump that runs into, through, through this hose, from the pump through the hose to this bubbler and putting a check valve in between so that nothing can backflow and stop up the functionality. But the bubbler is kind of like you put it in the bottom of the tank in the middle and it bubbles and there's like, it's like a vertical waterfall or a reverse waterfall, but it's air bubbles and it better aerates. Now, they're in a nice, quiet, peaceful tank. I don't know if this is necessary. I don't know if we're going to actually utilize this, but he likes it visually in his bedroom. To me, if I was a fish, the noise, the constant bubble, 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 would, would annoy me, but I'm... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a grumpy old man. So, it is what it is. We're going to get busy and see if we can, uh, you know, pull this all together and start pouring some water in here. Like I said, these are going back to the store. We might, if, if they have white rocks on the shelves, I would just go to the store and try to exchange this because he, uh, he threw away the receipt. So, I don't, that's why I don't know how much this was, how much that was, how much these were. Well, we're going to go try to exchange these for white gravel. And if, if that is successful, we'll have 15 pounds of new gravel coming. Plus 5 is 20. Plus this is be 25 pounds of gravel in a 20-gallon tank. Now, I'll keep you updated as this build uh, progresses. But for now, we want to unbox. And I don't know. I'm going to read the instructions and see if I'm supposed to, uh, what do you call it? 
wash wash the interior of the tank or is is it ready straight from the factory you know a lot of times factory and manufacturing processes use chemicals and packaging and humans who touch everything with oily dirty hands or potentially good who knows what um silicone caulk whatever so we're gonna find out right all right so you've had enough time to look at the words on here but i'm gonna set this aside and uh and then we're gonna cut it open Gonna move the cars, just for safety. They do look cool. Um, uh, maybe, hopefully, we'll, we'll end up putting a nice uh, black hot rod and a white hot rod out there, or some combination. Oh my God, a Mustang Fastback, a white Mustang Fastback with two black rally stripes would be badass. And the reverse, oh my God, a black one with white and black stripes, or white stripes. That would be cool. Corvettes, I don't care. Challengers, Chargers, whatever. Diecast cars are cool, and uh, that would be f fun to have here. Not really a, a place I would want to put, like, candles and stuff, or other decorations, but you've seen the house in other videos. It's heavily decorated. Um, so, like I said, my goal today is to get this box broken open and, uh, hey, shut up and do it, right? Okay. Uh, okay, I had to kill the beer. We're gonna open this later. And I wanna give you a, a, a little tour of the packaging. Let's see, does that fit on screen? No, it does not. If I tilt it back a little bit, it's basically the exact same uh, language, well, wording in a different language on the top. No, it's actually the same language. All right, check out the full selection of aquaculture kits online at walmart.com. Okay, it takes Aquatech number two cartridge for the filters. It has an LED, uh, lights are built into the hood. Stocking level up to 15 fish. Now that's if you're gonna have little baby Tetras and stuff. Um, recommendation that I have seen online is 10 gallons per angelfish and in time or as soon as possible we're going to pick up probably two little baby albino catfish and a, a little baby placosimus to scrub you know they're your little cleaner fish they're your worker bees and the two angels should be able to keep each other company but we might throw a red tailed shark in here or a couple of mollies just uh you know, that wouldn't overcrowd things. But here we go. On this side, they talk about maintain monthly. Remove 30% of your water every month. Holy cow. I was told it was 25%, but yeah. Every month, replace with clean room temperature water treated with Tetra Aqua Safe. Okay, Tetra Aqua Safe is a product used to remove minerals from tap water like fluoride chlorine probably some minerals that you know a fish may not be may not be friendly for the fish um add tetra cleaning bacteria replace the filter cartridge so monthly maintenance is described right here on the side um cold water environment or tropical community environment so Maximum tropical fish is 15, and the temperature should be between 76 and 82 for those fish, and a heater is required. That would be Molly, Guppy, Danio, Glowfish. Oh, Glowfish sounds fun. Tetras, Barbs, Picos, Grannies, Cory, or Angel. Now, under the cold water, you can throw uh, maximum number of cold water fish, too. So the cold water fish seem to be fighters. <laughs> Um, but I don't know why they're putting a Pleco here because our, oh, okay, Pleco does double duty. They're hardy fish. But any of these kids with the uh, bulging eyes and the big tails seem to be fighters, and you can only have two of them in this tank. But you can have 15 of these guys. Now, like I said, angels, mm, 10 gallons per angel because that's their territory. But the little guys, the smaller fish can, can float around and hang out with them. A garami, I'm, I'm curious how that's going to fly. But... You know, we're gonna we're gonna fish around and find out. So I'm trying to also watch my little side screen, make sure that you're, you're tuned in and I, I'm not moving the the uh, not moving 
things out of focus and out of range. All right, so I just brought it a little closer and a little closer. And let me tilt it a little more. That looks good. All right, included in this kit, LED lighting system, glass aquarium, scratch resistant. It is 24 inches long, 12 and a half inches deep. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, and 16 inches high. So 24 by 12 inches deep and 16 inches high. Uh, the LED lighting system reduces loss from evaporation because it's not hot white, but it's not adding any heat, whereas the old you know, incandescent type of or fluorescence, uh, whatever. It's good. It'll work fine. Aquatec 1020 power filter. Okay, so there's one pump they're giving you as a, as a filter that runs in both their 10 and 20 gallon tanks. Keeps the water crystal clear. Well, that depends if you're diligent and you make monthly uh, filter and cartridge changes, whatever. It, it, I don't know, it's a cartridge system or it's a whatever. We'll find out. Easy change number two, filter cartridge included. Okay, so they call it a filter cartridge. Um, powerful 125 gallons per hour filtration. Okay, great. Ultra quiet, 40 decibel, less than 40 decibels with self priming adjustable motor. Three stage filtration, dual speed or dual sided floss screens. Oh, Dual sided floss screens out dirt and debris. Ultra activated carbon removes odors, discoloration, and impurities. Stage three biofoam cultivates aerobic bacteria, which remove toxic ammonia and nitrate. Okay, so yeah, like most animals, humans included, um, when you eat food, and guess what? They drink water. Um, they need to be hydrated. Sounds weird, doesn't it? Um, and then they, they urinate and they poop. And the poop is largely, in, and their urine is largely loaded with ammonia, just like humans and every other animal. If you've ever been into an old barn where there's been a bunch of animals living in there, uh, it smells like ammonia. It's gross. Um, anyway, Tetra AquaSafe sample to you know treat the water. This bottle here, uh, food sample and complete owner's manual with monthly care instructions. Yay. All right, let's go to side four. Oh boy. Well, let's see, how are we focused on that? It looks like, uh, looks like we just need to tip it down a little bit maybe. Get a little closer. And you can read this yourself without me reading every word to you. But basically it covers food and care, the equipment, 10 to 30. Oh, the, the heater is capable of, of heating a 10 or 30, 10, 20, 30 um, gallon tank for tropical fish. It includes an air pump that does the same, 10, 20, 30 air pump, ground cleaner for monthly water changes. What? Oh. Oh, other purchase suggestions. My bad. All right. Well, that's cool that they, they offer, you know, a bucket. I, got, I went and bought a five gallon bucket. We already have a net. Um, I would like to have a brand new net because our old net has a hole in it and it's also dirty because it's been used in old stuff. And then there's decor. So, all right, I'm gonna back this thing up again because I'm gonna bust it out and see how it goes. Oh my, uh, I'm surprised at this. Wow. I really thought there'd be more. Um, instead of just a bunch of parts. Yeah, let, me, let, me, let me wait for the stream on my side phone to catch up. Yeah. Like, this is just bopping around in here. There's just parts in the tank. There's no, there's no uh, uh, bubble wrap or nothing. That's not cool, dude, but whatever. All right, so this is just a Plastic lid. I'm gonna rinse this off in the bathtub, I think, before I put it on there. It doesn't have any odor. Um, these are slotted so that you can put your, you can remove one of these and put your, your filter on one side or the other probably. Then you have a feeding uh, area, the hole in the top. That's where you usually drop your food in daily. 
Okay. Part one. I'm gonna take off styrofoam. And this one made a snap, but it didn't break. All right. I mean, I guess it's packaged well enough to make the trip. Um, has a little inspector number on there. That'll be invisible if we keep that oriented towards the back of the tank. Get your little food sample. Get your LED lights that we're gonna string into the lid. Like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wash that lid or rinse it at least. Got some AquaSafe water or AquaSafe water treatment. Condition monthly, makes tap water safe. Well, I guess if you're doing a 30% water change each month, that, that, that would be the thing. Now see, on a 55 gallon tank, that's a lot of water, man. Uh, let's see, 10% uh, is five gallons. That'd be a 15 gallon water change over there, at least 15 gallons. Um, you gotta suck 15 gallons out and then put 15 gallons in. Now, you don't wanna shock the fish in terms of the temperature changes, they can handle a little temperature fluctuation of, you know, three, four, five degrees, but you, you sure as hell aren't going to pour. Well, how do you get 15 gallons of room temperature water laying around or sitting around? And right now, room temperature is, uh, in the winter, it's 65 degrees. In summer, we keep the air conditioner at like 75. So, uh, you'd have to dump a, a heater in a five-gallon bucket and then put it in once the temperature reaches 80. Or you have to run bathtub and run hot water, check it, make sure it's about 75 to 80 degree water, and then use water treatment stuff, and then pour it in there. Jeez, that's just crazy. I don't know how it's done. I'm gonna have to watch some YouTube videos about how to do a water change. I've seen people actually, um, you know, siphon water out and pump water in, um, but how do they control the temperature and, 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 and make sure that that water doesn't have fluoride and chlorine and things that might be harmful to their fish community. So, I don't know, man, I'm a noob at this. Well, I'm just here to show you that, hey, we got some stuff and I'm gonna try to figure it out and make it happen. All right, so I'm gonna pull this off and you've already seen that. We're gonna drop this on the floor. And lift the tank out. <clears throat> there it is. All right. So, other things in the tank is a mystery box. Okay, and opening that is the little adapter that the pump plugs into. And it's got a little twist tie on it. I'm going to go ahead and do a five gallon dump. Um, in here just to like start a rinse process. Shoot, you know what? My buddy's got a siphon. So, hmm. <laughs> what if we just, uh, yeah, don't think that'll work. But we, we have a siphon. Um, so we could potentially fill this whole thing up, 20 gallons, let's soak any stuff that's on any of the walls or, you know, do a leak test basically. Um, and if it holds water and everything's fine after a couple days, or after a day or two, we'll go ahead and siphon it back out, dump that water, rinse the tank, dump it again, and then begin filling it up. And I, I really want to get these guys out of that tank as quickly as possible, but I'm not going to have to gravel um, for another week and a half, I think. And, you know, they don't sell it here locally, so we're kind of going to be in... Uh, 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 I feel that we're up against the wall. I, I feel that the two original fish over there are really suffering and they're hiding in the corner and they're not eating and they're going to fade and, and what's the word? They're gonna wither away. So I wanna get them into a new environment, plenty of food, nobody antagonizing them when they go up to eat. Nobody trying to shush them off, push them off, poke them in the head. It's just, it's just been tragic to watch that, dude. I don't like that at all. Anyway, such is life, right? All right, so what else we got? They give us the Walmart fish guide. That's pretty cool. Um, all right, so let me see. If I hold this right here. Wow. 
Hunter? A little less Batman cockeyed? There you go. Yeah. All right. So, we can screenshot that. Maybe that will be my... Uh, nah, it'll probably be a picture of the box. But, anyway, you can read this later. <laughs> right? But it gives you 5-gallon, 10-gallon, 20-gallon, 29-gallon, and 55. They have, they have a 55-gallon kit through Walmart. That's kind of amazing. Um, that they're... they're, they're I'm surprised there's that big of a market for this. Our Walmart just quit selling fish altogether. No live animals. Done. Uh, all right. So then we have our starter kit manual. It gives you a parts checklist. Tips for success. Safety first. Now, I'm not going to go through all this. I'm going to scan it real quick. I'm not going to read you every word. Don't overcrowd your tank. Isolate fish if disease occurs. We do have a fish over there with fin rot, and I figured that that would spread to everyone. It hasn't yet, but I am going to try to treat that. Once I become comfortable with doing a water exchange somehow, I want to treat that tank with salt because the bacteria will dehydrate and die in a salty environment, but the fish will not. <clears throat> but after you've treated them with salt, there's a one, two, and three stage treatment system about quantity per gallon of salt. Yeah, fin rot, fin rot is a thing. It can happen. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm a noob, dude. Learn about it. I'm trying to share love. Uh, if you're interested in the hobby or if, if this puts you off the hobby, okay, good. Good thing you ran away before you ended up buying some stuff and having some fish and they all died. Don't do that. Um, all right, there you go. Rinse before use. Okay, I'm glad that they are actually telling me this. Where should I put the aquarium? A flat, water-resistant surface near an electrical outlet. Okay, good. We have that. Don't place on top of electronics. Oh, man, if this thing ever did leak and down and... Okay. Uh, use a new, damp, soft cloth to rinse and clean new aquariums inside and out. All right, you know what? I have a microfiber cloth. I have, I have several of them, actually. And I'm probably going to use that. Um, it doesn't indicate that you should use soap. Uh, never use household soaps or chemicals on aquariums, decor, or equipment due to the harm they may cause to the fish and the equipment. Okay? A damp soft cloth, rinse, rinse and clean. All right, so basically slobber a bunch of water on there, then dump the water, and then use the, a nice clean new sponge or microfiber cloth to wipe that area clean. Um, rinse all gravel, plant, decorations, and filter cartridges prior to placing into the aquarium. Rinse gravel in a new bucket and with clean water. Okay, I kind of already knew that. Um, all right, soft cloth, rinse and clean, new aquariums inside and out. Rinse all gravel, plants, and decorations. All right, then add your gravel. Place one to one and a half inches of gravel at the bottom of the aquarium. Now, one inch of gravel, uh, or you, the one and a half inch, okay, so we already have from the gravel bag, we have that calculation about how many bags we're going to need. <laughs> one to two pounds of gravel, gravel for every gallon of water. 20 gallons they want, 20 pounds of freaking gravel, or up to 40 pounds of gravel. That just seems way, way over the top. Who knows? Maybe it will help. Um, slope the gravel bed gradually down from the back to the front to add depth to your uh, aquascaping. Oh, just visually, it gives a little, a little more, you know, visual um, optical illusion that your your that your tank is deeper than it is. All right. Add water and add the Tetra Aqua Safe water conditioner. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wash the tank. I'm going to fill the tank. And then I'm going to run the pump. I'm going to hook up the lights. And we're going to let it go at that for now. And you know what? Maybe I shouldn't throw 20 gallons of water in here. But I would like to have everything in here running and filtering. And hmm. Oh, my goodness. Look at that. They don't run a bead of silicone. That's a piece of silicone tape. That's tape. This is taped together. 
Oh my. Huh. Wow, that's very interesting. I'm just running my finger on the surface of this tape. Huh. Yeah, and I haven't touched anything toxic on it. Even a little, a little dab of uh, around the tip top, only on the corners. So they're using it on the corners to glue this plastic frame to the glass, but it's not consistent. It's not, it's not uh, silicone all the way around the black top. Wow. Okay. Mm, that's cheap. Add the gravel and uh, then room temperature water. Initially fill it two thirds full. Always fill the aquarium with room temperature water. Cool water can cause condensation on the outside of the glass, giving the appearance of leakage. Ah, fill the aquarium approximately two thirds full, leaving space to allow placement of plants, decor, and filtration during setup. Okay, well, that'll come when we're ready to do a final, um, you know, when we have gravel and we have the gravel rinsed and we put it in there and, we, and we've already done, we're, I'm, I'm gonna do basically a flush and fill, or a fill and flush. Um, <clears throat> All right, remove any extra packaging and insert the filter cartridge according to the instruction manual. Uh, don't plug in the filter yet. The aquarium must be filled the rest of the way before starting the filter. Aha. So, I can't. And, and maybe there's no point. I, I, honestly, I would like to run the filter and, and, and circulate product water through the cartridges and then once we get the new gravel in there run them and do a, a short change on the filters maybe change the filters in 10 days instead of 30 um, because it's a new tank and the quicker you change out the filter maybe we'll, we'll remove any potential toxins in gravel or toys well toys whatever decorations whatever they call them landscape elements um, yeah so we'll, we'll see as we go uh, fish around and find out. Do something, even if it's wrong, you're going to learn from what you did. All right. If desired, add an aquarium heater. <clears throat> now, in that aquarium, that, that heater came with a digital thermostat, which is really cool. You just dip in the water. Now, I would rinse this so we don't cross-contaminate any potential, um, you know, if there's fin rot in that tank and that's a bacteria, then I'm going to wash the hell out of my digital thermometer before I put it in here to get a read on this. Oh, but, you know, maybe it, it came with, uh, maybe the heater comes with the little temperature tape. If that's the case, then I'm not going to jack around with the digital thermometer. I'll just make sure that this thing gets up to about a good solid lit 80 at all times. And then we know that the fish coming from there into here are going to be comfortable. And it's not going to be like, holy crap, it's cold in here. Um, all right, so if desired, add an aquarium heater. Air, stone, or bubble wand with an air pump. Okay, so like I said, I'm going to leave that bubble waterfall thing go. Initially, we're just going to try to get things started. Add aquatic plants, decorative rocks, and ornaments, remembering to rinse them all first. Now, <laughs> what good is it if you rinse them in water, the water has chlorine in it, and then I guess as long as you let it air dry and evaporate, there could potentially still be chlorine residue on, on some of these, you know, decorations and rocks and plants and ornaments and stuff. But uh, going to try to keep a tight rein on this tank. I don't want it to be stark, bleak, and barren, but white gravel, black background, a gray tree limb, another gray tree limb, and, <clears throat> I don't know, maybe a couple of fake green plants, uh, plastic greenery. Um, so the fish say have somewhere to hide when they feel threatened, and why would they? They're, they're going to be away from the bullies. They're going to be in here by themselves. They were already friends in this tank and peaceful with one another. Didn't uh, fight over food. Um, and, you know, throw a couple of uh, little albinos or a plico in there, and we're good. All right, so add the aquatic plants. Place taller plants towards the back of the tank and shorter ones towards the front to give the appearance of depth. Okay, once all filters, heaters, bubble wands, and decor are installed, fill the aquarium with treated, dechlorinated water to within two to three inches from the top rim. 
this extra space will allow fish to be added without overflowing the aquarium. Well, that's considering or assuming that you're going to take fish from a fish store in a bubble bag, put them in there, and then cut the bag and release that water into your water. We're going to pick these guys up in a net and take them from point A to point B as quickly as possible. So we should be okay. We're going to fill this, you know, within an inch of the top or two inches of the top is fine. There'll still be plenty of water for the guys to get acclimated. And hopefully we aren't going to lose a fish in this process. Not because the fish is 10 or 15 or $20. Who cares? We, we really like our damned fish, you know? Spot and, and whitey have personalities. And uh, the other guys do too, but they're, they're like obnoxious, unpleasant personalities in some cases. And, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really thinking that's because they're fighting for the female's attention. Maybe not. Maybe whitey is not a female. Don't know. But he's almost pure white. He's got a little orange on his back, and then he has a raccoon mask. Um, really cool looking fish. You know, he's in my other videos. All right, so install the LED aquarium hood and light. Uh, before placing the hood on the aquarium, position the hood face up. Um, slide each LED module into place. Uh, plug it in. Oh, okay. This is the light, because it's got the little rocker switch. So that, that'll, that's the light. The pump will plug in and just run constantly, so there isn't a little switch on that. Okay, final set of steps. Double check the water levels within recommended parameters. Uh, plug all appliances and the light hood into the power outlet. Always make sure a drip loop for safety. Uh, use the light switch to power the LED lights on or off. Allow the filter to run to be sure it's functioning properly. I'm going to run that filter uh, you know, a day or two before the fish ever get transferred, if possible. As soon as I get that gravel, get that set up, I'll be running that filter, and then, or I'll be running the pump, yeah, filter. And possibly switching out the cartridge, because why not? Um, that seems like something, oh, crap. I wonder if it's on the shelf, if I can just go to Walmart and grab one that's, bam, a replacement. It's got to be pretty damn affordable. Let's go buy five or six of them so that there's always one and we can put it on our phone calendar so it pops up first of the month, pay the rent, first of the month, change filter, and you know be doing that kind of thing on the regular. All right, so ideal water temps, we've already covered, it was on the outside of the box, but stop before adding fish. Be sure to add Tetra, safe start to cycle your new aquarium. Well, that's already a thing. All right, so when adding your fish, it's important to create a healthy, biologically active environment and stuff. Okay, adding fish. Well, again, they're, they're looking at adding fish from purchase fish in a bag at a pet store or do not pour water, top the aquarium off. Um, let's equalize water temperature. Okay, acclimate, you know, put the water bag in there, let the temperature equalize and acclimate the fish to the new environment. Um, oh, and then there, an, another method is um, funnel the fish through a net. Do not pour water from the transport bag into the aquarium instead. Oh, okay. Let them, let the temperature acclimate and then pour the bag into a net and let that water go into a bucket so that you don't contaminate your cure, your water with the aquarium bag water. I get it. All right, very good. Well, that's going to wrap it up for now because um, the rest of the thing is me actually doing this, doing the steps. You know, I'll open this up. This is our filter, our pump and stuff. I'll get that hung back here. I'll, 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 I'll rinse everything out, like I said, with the microfiber cloth and, and wash and rinse stuff. Unplug all aquarium equipment. Good. Here's, here's a, a nice, uh, here's, here's the shortcut guide. It takes 30 minutes every 30 days. Replace all of your water. Oh, this is a, a, a water change guide. All right, well, that's very cool. So I'm impressed. The manual's, you know, good, simple, um, and straightforward. So here's some other products that you should use for ongoing maintenance. And bam, safety instructions. And I think we're all set. Now you know what comes in the package. And uh, like I said, this is the filter. It's got its own little set of instructions. I'm gonna follow that. Ooh, it's got a little parts guide. Very good, very nice. Quick setup, guide. 
Let's see, how's that coming on, on the screen? Looks good. Everything looks good. Okay, and then Aquatech. Um, this is another unfolder. Here it is. Clean intake tube monthly. Wow. All right, dude. So if you're going to get into this hobby or if you're going to buy fish and take care of fish, there's a little more to it than, uh, you know, buy a tank, fill with water, and throw in a goldfish. You actually have to do maintenance on the monthly. Um, and, you know, we have a pretty elaborate... Um, let, me, let me show you that real quick. Before we end the video, in case you haven't seen one of my previous videos about the aquarium, and, you know, this, this, this is like, it's going to be easy peasy. Got a big old rubber band on it. It's got a cord. Going to take that off. The cord's going to... Oh. Okay, it got caught in there. There's a down tube probably on the side of here. Yeah, I'm guessing. Yep. So here's here's the bottom part. Here's the down tube. Um, and here's the filters. Everything's inside of here. It goes like this. The cord goes on the back, of course. Then, like I showed you on this lid, there's a cutout. So if you want that on the left or the right, it's your choice. This cutout matches the size of this thing that drops into and through this cutout. And put the lights in there, get that cutout bumped so it slides in, drops down, bada bing, bada boom, you're good to go. Anyway, I hope that was fun, interesting. Um, if you're in, you know, if you're interested in doing this and in getting one of these things, I recommend checking back because I will make more videos as this progresses, as I have time to clean the tank. I don't think you need to stand around and watch me, you know, wash out the tank and pour water in and pull water out and stuff like that. So I hope that was a good unboxing introduction and we'll see you on the next video. Oh, I did say that I would show you our current tank before we check out. And there it is. That's a 55 gallon tank. And let's see, if I set this down and tilt it forward, cruise right on up here. Give you a quick introduction. See this gray and black kind of decoration, decorative tree, fake tree, fake wood. Um, that's what I want to put in that tank. And with the white gravel and the black background and some gray features. Um, I don't know if our fish colorblind, I, I can't imagine they are. They must have the ability to see color. You know, there always was uh, the, the, the belief that dogs are colorblind. I don't know. But uh, we've got our digital thermometer here because the house has cooled off a little bit. The other day when it was 90 outside, um, it was quite warm in here. Now we're at 79.8 degrees with this digital thermometer. And we, ha we haven't mounted this because I've, I've been, you know, testing this side of the tank, the high, the, the like, like I do this. And... I checked the temperature at the surface versus the bottom. So I haven't stuck that anywhere in the tank specifically because that, that new heater is, well, the heater is fairly new and it has a dial to adjust your temperature setting. Now look, these guys think it's time to eat. Anytime they see a human, man, it's time to eat. All right, so that was at 79 something down here, but higher up in the tank, it's 80 degrees. So I can also take this guy and move it to this other um, area of the tank where I can drop it in and back here on the opposite side of the tank near the surface and this is pretty instant oh is that just because the because it was out yeah okay it dropped suddenly to 77 degrees that's how fast this thing is catching a temperature over here it was 80 but when I had it out in the in the regular air the atmosphere it dropped to 77 degrees that quick because it's 72 degrees here in the house. And now I've dropped it back here. I'm about four inches deep and it is already back up to 80 degrees. So our temperature near the surface is 80 degrees. If the fish want to be like a half a degree cooler, I can take this probe and let it sink you know, to the bottom and check our temps down there. You can see maybe you can see it, it's down there. 
80.2 degrees. So, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and uh, since I got the fish all excited, this is a koi, that's a koi, that's a koi. This guy is redneck. And this guy is double tap. Or double shot or double tap? Double tap. Because he looks like he's been shot up in a gunfight. Uh, redneck, because he's got the reddest eyes and the, and, the, and the most orange on his head. I don't know why we really called him that. Yellowhammer, we were looking for kind of a badass Viking name. And this guy has become the badass Viking. He is a troublemaker. He beats up everybody. He's kind of a dickhead. But you can cut, he's yellow, his, he has a big yellow head and he's a hammerhead. He's a dumb little bludgeon fighter guy. And this is Whitey. Whitey is absolutely beautiful, but he's got fin rot. His tail was a perfect, a perfect circular shape, and I want to cure that. I want that guy to heal, and I want to regrow his fins. His dorsal fin was a perfect shape and a perfect crescent in, in, in every case. And that fish is just absolutely beautiful. Boy or girl, I don't know. But I'm curious if he's actually a, a koi also, or maybe it's a she, See, these three guys, they're just constantly fighting each other. And Whitey's kind of at peace. But, you know, this guy sometimes will, will harass Whitey. But uh, Spot is back there. And let's see. Can you see Spot? I can see him. No. Um, I can't lower this ding. I can't get the tripod to loosen. <clears throat> oh, there it is. Oh, come on. Can you... Can we drop that? Oh, yeah, we can. Yay! That thing has been so stiff. All right, so let's do that. And now let's tighten the neck on the tripod. And he's going to be pretty tough to see. Because I have letters in the way. But if you look right at the top of this tube, that's my boy. The original fish. The only survivor of a pack, a six pack of angels that came into the house and all five died within three weeks, two weeks maybe. But the original fish is back there at that tube or at the height of that. And as long as we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and feed him for the camera. It's fun to watch. So I use a little tiny eighth teaspoon measuring cup or measuring spoon. It doesn't seem to make it rain. Sometimes there's snowfall, but usually the mollies and the black uh, sharks are the red, red fin, black tail shark, no, red tail sharks. They, they usually pick up anything that gets past the carnivorous, <laughs> the piranhas, dude. Um, you can see the, uh, the, the, the mollies are at the top. They're hammering away. Here comes Spot. He's dropping down a little bit. Maybe he'll turn around. We can get a view. I mean, that's nice, beautiful, black and white, standard uh, looking um, angelfish. And the reason his name's Spot is he's got that one single squarish oval shaped spot. I was going to call him Bullseye, but I thought, nah, let's just call him Spot. He's a good dog. He's a very good dog. And this is Whitey, like I said, his tail is all ragged, his other fins are ragged. They were a perfect crescent. When I get him in that other tank, I really hope that we can uh, treat him with uh, some salt and kill any bacteria that is causing fin rot, and it, then he'll regrow. If you go on YouTube, you can see... Um, now, these aren't saltwater fish, but the salt is intended to kill the bacteria because it, it will make the bacteria dehydrate and die. So, doing that in a smaller tank with less gallons of water, doing water swaps in that smaller tank. So I guess I, I guess I will call it a hospital tank and also maybe a, res uh, a reserve for Spot who has become lethargic and he's not eating and he hides in the corner. He doesn't just swim around and enjoy himself like he used to. Him and Whitey used to just cruise the whole tank and now they, they hang out in the background because these guys are just super hyperactive, man. So anyway... I'll let you watch the aquarium um, for a few minutes, and I'm going to go grab a beer and say, say my goodbyes in a moment. Now, 
it's so cool to me. I mean, I know they're just looking for a handout, right? It's like a puppy. He'll come running if you got the milk bone, you got the little doggy treats. Hell, even your cat will come running if it hears crinkle, crinkle, crinkle of the package that you're opening and it knows, oh, that means tuna time. Um, hell, if you run the electric can opener sometimes, the cat's come running at my friend's house because they think they're going to get a can, you know, canned cat food, wet cat food instead of dry cat food. Anyway, you, you can see, 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 that's, that's Yellowhammer. And he's just, they're just, bam, bam. If anybody can tell me, please, on YouTube, I'm going to export this video to YouTube in the YouTube comment section. Are these guys fighting or are these guys playing? I can't imagine that fish are playful. Now, dolphins, yeah, okay. But do sharks play? Do angelfish play? Eh, eh. I'm thinking no. I'm thinking they're fighting, but why? They, they just had plenty of food. And, and, and Whitey, if, if Whitey is in fact a female, you know, she's over there. Or he, it, or whatever. Whitey's over there in the corner. Why, is it, why are these two guys bam, 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 hammering each other? Oh, I'm sorry, that, it's not that guy. Well, sometimes this guy ends up getting caught in the middle. His name's Double Tap. He's got holes shot in him from both sides. Pop, pop, one to the head. Two to the chest, one to the head. You know how it goes. And he's got that kind of spot pattern. Here's Yellow Hammer. I also called him Black Sword because there's a black stripe in his dorsal fin. And when you hold a sword, and you're a Viking, and you're gonna use a, a broadsword, the sword stands up. This, um, is Redneck. He has very red eyes. And bam, look at that. Yellowhammer just came over and rammed him for no reason whatsoever. What are you doing, dude? Then there he goes again. What the hell? So anyway, Redneck has that black uh, coloration on his tail. So I called him Black Spear. So we've got Black Sword, Black Spear, but they also have another name. And the Black Spear in the defensive position, or in the fighting position, I should say, a spear is held with point up and the rear side down usually. And then they elevate that and either uh, jab, block, or throw. So I was just trying to go for Viking names and maybe, maybe because I gave them Viking names is why they fight each other <laughs> like a bunch of Vikings. I don't know, man. I'm just making stuff up, hoping, hoping you are entertained and enjoying, you know, seeing our tank. Um, I'll keep you updated on the new tank, and I'm just about to kick off a teriyaki chicken fried rice uh, cook on the Blackstone Grill. Next, as soon as this stream ends, I'm going to wash my hands, clean up the countertop, and get busy in the kitchen. So if you stick around, hope you'll see that. Go to troysweb.com, find a big YouTube logo on the side there. And visit my YouTube channel because I have everything. All my videos are organized into. Oh, look at that! Look at the black shark upside down. <laughs> uh, he he's hilarious. He is very very active. Um, okay, as I was saying, ho hope you'll go to troysweb.com, find the YouTube logo, hit my website, or hit my YouTube channel, and give me a subscribe on YouTube. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a like on a video that you see here on Twitch or that gets transferred over to YouTube. I need some encouragement because I'm ready to just say, ah, I quit, nobody cares, nobody's watching. I don't get any thumbs up and I don't get any comments. Okay, am I a big dickhead? Yeah, probably. And I say the word dickhead, so a lot of, I'm not family friendly. Um, but, you know, sometimes I'm like, ah, I'll keep streaming, I'll keep drinking, keep partying, doing stuff. It's creative, it's, it's fun. Um, and sometimes it's discouraging. It's heartbreaking that hmm, nobody cares. Uh, what's that? A uh, friend of mine, his little girl from church used to sing a song. Nobody loves me. Everybody hates me. I think I'll go eat worms. I've never heard that. It's not a nursery rhyme I'm familiar with. But she was, uh, she was an interesting little kid. Oh, oh no. What is that? There's something on this plant back here. I don't know what that is. It might be a dead fish. Something that maybe died way in the back. We've lost a platy and we've lost a molly. I mean, they just haven't shown up to eat in the longest time. We haven't seen their carcass. Usually the carcass gets sucked into the filter or against the screen. We have enough flow. 
Um, hmm. But I'm seeing a white chunk back here. Anyway, what I was uh, saying was the big, the big red tail shark. He's he is a very active character. He is busy, busy. The albino cats, busy, busy. This other small red tail shark. This guy owns this piece of wood. He'll let the the the, the catfish sniff around. He'll let this guy sniff around, but. He almost never leaves this. This is like his home. And every once in a while, I, I saw him digging in the gravel like, is he trying to build a nest? Is it spawning season or something? But there's two smaller red tail sharks. I believe that's what it's called, right? So there's one and there's two. We got Big Boy. We got the other one who usually, oh, oh, there he, okay. So that one's hanging around here. And all of them have a little white tip on their dorsal fin and on their back um, fin. So really beautiful fish. I love them. Um, this guy's always busy. The other one, the, the other one is about the same size as this guy that you can see. Oh, man, it's hard to point at a fish through, through glass. But this guy back here, oh no, he looks like he's got fin rot too. Oh no, he's in rough shape. It might be because the big freaking guy bites on him all the time. I call him pale tail. He is a red tail shark, but his back, ta his tail is pink on the regular. The guy who's always um, scrounging around this, the smaller one that's always on this uh, piece of wood, his tail is bright red on the regular. And he's the same size and he's not as torn up and bitten up. That guy looks like he's bitten up. Sometimes he'll get PO'd and turn, turn tail or turn around and just ram that big black guy who's chasing him constantly. So it's really weird. I've, I've never been around an aquarium in my life. So if you haven't either, you will find it's quite interesting. Um, heck, it's better than most shows you're going to see on television. And there, there you go. Yellowhammer. And then now Double Double Tap is fighting back. You go, boy. Get him. No, I, I don't want him to get him. But I don't want him to start the trouble in the first place for, the, for this guy to have to like turn around and, and fight back. So now Yellowhammer just went after Redneck. And Double Tap is defending Redneck? Double Tap is a little guy compared to the other two. See, I mean, they, is that normal fish behavior? Are they playing or are they fighting? Can they really hurt each other? Is there any chance that one's going to kill the other? I, I, I can't imagine. Uh, but these are a ton of things. I don't know. I'm sure there's a billion aquarium specialist, angelfish specialists on YouTube, please leave a comment and let me know what's happening in our tank. Um, I'm going to try to remedy the situation, like I said, and, and I might be removing uh, Pale Tail and buying another Red Tail Shark to pair with him because I think every species should have a partner. Whether it's a boy or a girl, they should just, somebody needs to be in the tank that they can identify with and hang with. And it is really interesting to me the mollies are always together. The angels, always together. The black tails, or the red, red tail sharks, always together. So they, they must not be, or yeah, they're certainly not colorblind. They can tell the other fish is their, their cohort, their, their relative, their same species, um, part of their clan, part of their tribe, part of their group. You know what I mean? But uh, anyway, really cool to see different fish behave in different ways. Um, I really wish I knew what happened to our orange tail, Molly. Where did she go? She was always on the tail of the guy with the long black sword on his tail. Uh, they were always, they were inseparable. And then poof, she just, she's gone. I mean, we didn't have a carcass. We didn't find a, a fish floating on the top or sucked into the filter. Uh, our platy. Uh, apparently, he was like three years old. And for my roommate, he says, that's pretty old. You know, when we got him, he might have been a year old. Uh, really? That's all you're going to get out of a platy? It's four years? Wow, that seems that seems odd. But I don't know. I'm new to this, like I said. Um, and you know what? These guys will eat at the drop of a hat. And for a while, I was definitely overfeeding. But for the sake of being Friday, it's, eh, I'm going I'm to let them party a little bit. And what I want to do is show you how they follow you around the room like puppies. It's, it's, that part's really cool and interesting to me. That uh, 
you know, I've been sitting here, so they just kind of went about their business. But as soon as I stick my face close to the tank, they're like, oh, oh, there's the human. We're going to get fed. So watch this. I hope it works since I just said, watch this. Hey, boys. Girls, fish of all ages. Woo, here they come. They're coming running. And there's Whitey. What's up, buddy? All right. So now, rednecks fighting off Yellowhammer. Bro, you're not getting fed over here. You know, hey, we're, just, we're just having a quick conversation. So I want to bring Whitey up into the crowd. Whitey, I want you to make sure, I want to make sure that you know that it's about time you're going to get fed. Because that's the only time I step my face right here like this, right? Talk to you guys. So now, they go over here. They know what's up. Hey, Whitey. Come here, buddy. And where's my boy Spot? Man, he's still just hanging over there by the, by the pump. And see, White, Whitey doesn't even care to eat. He, he just doesn't want to come over by these guys because they just fight constantly. But, uh, dudes, I'm going to feed you, okay? You know, you know that sound, and you know that there's something about to go down. Now, maybe these guys have had enough, but the Mollies seem hungry, and these, these two are always hungry. Oh, wait, double tap? It's usually double tap and, um, I'm sorry, yellow hammer and redneck over here. And uh, apparently my roommate has never named his, any of his fish. He's like, yeah, I get them and they die. Like, oh, no, I bumped, I bumped the thing and I lost half my load. Oh, well. I didn't want to overfeed them anyway. So they're getting to get a little bit of food and I'm going to... Try to clean that up. All right. Sorry, guys. All right, so we have a little snowfall, and the, the red-tailed sharks are not that hungry. Whitey, Whitey is not even going to come over here and be around these guys at all because during feeding, it, it's a fight. So that's why I usually, like, give these guys food over here, and I've been trying to, like, you know, sneak Whitey. Just a little something over here. Like, hey, dude, there's food above you. Go eat. Go eat. Whitey, go, 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 go. Man, dude, there's food all around you. Now, the other fish do usually clean everything up. And uh, I don't know. I did buy a... Oh, man. Yeah, we've had a couple of spills, haven't we? I did buy a pH test and ammonia test. And it's never been done on this tank before. I guess he's... Oh, wow, there's all kinds of fish flake on the floor. We need a vacuum cleaner. Um, he's never done a pH or ammonia test in this tank. It's been running for three years, I believe. Maybe three and a half years, maybe four years. He doesn't know. Um, he moved in here. He, you know, had to, he got all his furniture and life in here. And then he set up the tank and then whatever. Um, it's been being gradually populated. There were some other tenants here, some his room, his former roommates, and they put in all this weird, colorful crap like that and that and that and that and that. It was a girl. Um, so I like the yellow and green stuff. I don't like the blue. I don't like the, I don't like the stuff that's not natural colors, but maybe in a weird underwater coral environment, uh, those colors are do exist in their world of angelfish. I doubt it. But uh, yeah, I've been snorkeling in Bahamas and Hawaii and where else? Florida. Um, California, really not much in Florida or California. Well, at least not where I went snorkeling. Hawaii was the bomb. Hawaii was the best. Bahamas was okay, but super shallow and pretty sparse. Hawaii was absolutely teeming with life. And that was, that was some of the best, uh, snorkeling I've ever done. All right. So it looks like Whitey is getting a little bit of food. He's hitting the surface. He's hitting some food. Woohoo. Good deal. Now, Spot is right up at the top of the heater. And yeah, I know this. I'm letting this uh, stream run long. But I, I really do like just watching them and, and they really make me curious about their behavior. And can we, can we cure the fighting? Or is it not even fighting and they're just playing? I mean, I don't really see injuries. I don't see anybody with bites, bite marks taken out of them. <laughs> um... But I don't think we're overcrowded 
on angels either. It's 10 gallons per angel, and we have five angels. Um, and they're, they're only a medium-sized angel. That's not even a large angel. Um, Spot was purchased as, well, I guess, a medium angel, and he has grown. These other guys were all purchased as medium angels, um, and I believe that they have all grown, except Double Tap. He doesn't seem to have grown much. Spot, like, grew pretty well for a period of time and then just stopped. When the new guys showed up, Spot stopped growing. So I think that it's because he tailored off. He doesn't eat as much. He just stays away from the bad boys. And uh, hopefully that's going to get rectified with that new 20-gallon tank and everything will be hunky-dory and happy. And everyone will live happily ever after. That's what I was going for. All right. Well, we will catch you on the next stream. Hope you enjoyed today's stream. Uh, like I said, I'll be making teriyaki chicken fried rice. Teriyaki chicken and fried rice. In a few minutes. Catch you next time. Troy is gone.